Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. A few quotes about growing up. Cleaning your house while kids are still growing up is a little bit like shoveling the sidewalk before it stops snowing. Uh, you know your kids are growing up when they stop asking where they came from and refuse to tell you where they're going. <laughs> Sometimes we are so concerned about making sure our, children's ha our children have what we didn't have growing up that we fail to give them what we did have growing up. Growing up has always had its challenges. This past week, 300 people got together to honor Bishop Harold Usgard as he leaves the office of bishop after 12 years. At this event, all three of his children spoke. All three spoke not as children of a bishop, they talked as children of a pastor and some of the challenges they had. PKs, pastor's kids, have some challenges growing up. But that's true of a lot of professions. Children of doctors have to sacrifice a great deal as parents rush off to the latest emergency. Children who grow up on farms have built-in employment, but they also are expected to do a much greater work than most of us had to do just because they live on a farm. President Obama spoke this past week wistfully about his own children growing up in the White House. He said that he was both proud and sad that his children were becoming more independent of their mother and their father. And certainly they have challenges growing up in the White House. When you were 15 years of age or if you have yet to attain 15 years of age, would you like, as Malia does, to have secret service agents watching virtually everything you do and monitoring nearly every one of your conversations at age 15? No, I didn't think that would be the case. Sometimes the challenge of growing up is just growing up. In centuries past, with the infant mortality rate, growing, the act of growing up, dangerous in itself. What challenges we have in growing up. You know, if any of us had a dollar for everybody who's ever said, kids have it so much harder today growing up, we would all be rich. To be sure they have great challenges, they also have great advantages. The explosion in technology, in information, in entertainment is, is overwhelming. I spent seven of my schooling years in Preston, Minnesota, just 35 miles southeast of, of here. Today, I live in Rochester. My cable television gets channels that number into the 900s. The 900s. Now, we don't receive all those television stations. I, you know, there must be over a hundred. When I was a kid in Preston, we didn't have that problem. We got two channels. And that day, we got Channel 10, which was KROC TV in Rochester, Minnesota. And we could pull in Channel 6 out of Austin on a really good day. We could get Channel 3, CBS, out of Mason City, Iowa. I mean, today to get a program, you, you, you need to have three remotes, two boxes, a dizzying array of cables, and an electrical engineering degree to figure out what's on there. Or conversely, you could just hand the remote to a five-year-old who will do just fine. <laughs> Growing up is hard to do sings a man who released that song a couple of years ago. And in spite of the fact that we live in a very blessed country and a blessed part of that blessed country, growing up has always, always had its challenges. Growing up in Christ is even hard. The author of the Ephesians, and we will continue to refer to him as Paul, given that we don't have any firm evidence that there's someone other who wrote this letter, Paul tells us that it is necessary for us to grow up. Now, he has been 
particularly articulate in explaining the great grace that we have in Jesus Christ through the first three chapters of Ephesians. But he also reminds us that God has expectations of us. We read of many of those expectations in the fourth chapter of Ephesians. We are to lead a life worthy of our calling in Christ. We are to bear one another in love. We are to build up the church in love. We are to stop being children who, who are so easily swayed to and fro by trickery and deceit. And finally, we are to grow up in Christ. There are a lot of children at this service. Many of them you saw up here moments ago. I imagine the three and four year olds who were sitting there secretly hoped that they had already grown up to be those big kindergartners who will start in just a few days. And if they were in elementary school, they probably wish they'd already grown up to be middle school students where there's much greater freedom, even going from room to room for some of the classes. And if they're in middle school, they hope they'll be in high school with the greater freedoms yet and the promise of a driver's license. And finally, when you are in high school, you, you pray that someday you'll be an adult where your choices are broader and broader as you mature and you age. Is there any child, I see so many of you here, are there any children, I don't care what your age, that you hope you just stop growing where you are? Is that crazy? I mean, any kid here who operates a tricycle or a big wheel, don't you hope someday you're going to get to a bicycle and even a car? Surely that's the case. In the same way, Paul in Ephesians says that we need to grow up in Christ. That is a given for most of us. We are not in the same place in our faith life as when we were three years old or 13 or 23. Hopefully we are studying the faith in some ways, but just by osmosis coming to worship, we glean more of the faith week by week. As we are out observing God's creation, we learn something about the faith. Still, Paul says, there is some danger here. Paul was addressing a group of Christians who had many influences in their lives. There were many in that day who would proclaim a different God and a different faith, a different way to salvation. As Paul would leave Ephesus, as, as he would need to do, would there be these infants in the faith, these newly converted Christians who would be swayed by silver-tongued orators to give up their way of salvation in Christ. So Paul says there is a solution, that people need to grow up, grow up in Christ. Use your gifts maturely and in love to build up the body of Christ. Now, if it is true that there were many influences in Paul's day, we could exponentially say there are many more in our day. You can turn on almost any one of those 900 channels on television and there are people or programs or advertisements who are getting to, to believe something and they have partially succeeded. There is no pastor who cannot tell you stories of people who are infants in the faith who have not had their faith clouded by other outside influences. Because of their immaturity, they tend to buy into some of them. For instance, how many conversations have I had with some Christians, sometimes very young, who profess their faith in Christ Jesus, but then also make room for reincarnation? How so? Uh, where in the Bible does it say that people are recycled? That, that we are recycled into either another human or into an animal of high or very low degree, depending upon the moral integrity of our current life. How does that square with the message of a Christ who has come to save us from our sins and immorality? A Christ who says he will take us from here to live with himself in heaven, not to come back as a squirrel? Uh, 
We live in a very pluralistic age. We have many faiths, faiths that claim to have a, a corner on the truth. Now, I am not God. It will be God who will judge all people, Christians included. But if there is a way other than Christ to God, we do not know that from our holy scriptures, nor do we know that from our 2,000-year tradition. We only know the way of Christ. As we mature in that faith, where we are inured against those who would proclaim something else, who by deceit or trickery would have us believe that there is a different way out of this world and unto eternal life. God has given us all the gifts we need to ensure that growth in the church and in people's faiths. Paul lists many of them in our reading today from Ephesians. The best illustration of that at Bethel happens at the end of every one of our baptismal services. The pastor takes the infant, the child, or the adult and walks out into the congregation ostensibly to remind the congregation that we all bear responsibility in raising up this individual in the faith. This is not a job that is relegated to parents and sponsors alone, to pastors or confirmation teachers alone. We are all to build up our infants in love, to encourage our elementary, our middle school, our high school students. We are to use our gifts maturely and in love so that the church is built up in love. Now, that may not be easy. Good things very rarely come easy to us, but they do lead to life and contentment that cannot be taken from us. May we ever be one body in Christ, ever growing up in Christ. Amen. Hymn 550, please rise and sing.